I, we have uh, on a boulder of rocks not far from our house, on it is uh, a diagram. Uh, it's called prophecy. So we call it prophecy rock. And uh, it depicts emergence of Hopi from the third world. See, we went through three, three worlds. This is the fourth one. And it is standing at the edge. We are standing at the edge of the fourth world uh, caused by the fact that we are now all traveling, not all, but the predominant population of races uh, have embraced uh, a materialistic path that has no heart. It's, a, it's, a, it's a science and technology. And, uh, and we are abandoning the spiritual path which is the path of a person of a farmer that we met our ancestors met when they came from the third to the fourth world his name was Ma'asau you know he is the guardian of the land caretaker of mother earth and on that prophecy rock the material path ends abruptly. The spiritual path just keeps going. At the beginning of the fourth world, there's a picture of Masa. And he is also standing at the end, basically meaning I am the first and I am the last. See, and he's still holding on to his corn. See, so there's hope. On Maasal's path, there's also three circles. Two are complete. First, the, the third one is halfway complete. They represent World War I, II, and the present world that we're now engaged in. So. So Maasau's path is now being disrupted by warfare that's going on. And now by global warming you know, that, that we, mankind, are creating. But in my belief, and I go back to water again, I believe the path of science, technology can still be intertwined with the mystical path, the spiritual path, mythical path. I think they can be intertwined 
as they were intertwined from the beginning when science and mythology was intertwined, then they separated. Now I think through water, water is the bridge that will bring us back together again. And I see a lot of hope in that because we went through various stages of, of um, science and now we have reached, have already going into another, another, another paradigm called quantum mechanics, quantum physics. That is what Hopi always taught. We are part of the hydraulic cycle. We are intertwined with nature. We are not separated. We are connected to every living thing, not just here on the planet, earthly planet, but down the bottom of the oceans, the cosmos, the universe. And we're connected to the continents and the islands uh, through water, through the ocean. And then the um, sixth uh, direction is the upper world, I mean the cosmos, the co cosmos sea, the home of the cloud people. And that's where you go when your physical body dies here on earth then the liquid inside your body evaporates and it joins, ascends to the cloud people, okay? And there we rest and we come back as rain, as snow, bringing water to nature, all of types of animals and insects and living things. We uh, replenish the lakes, the aquifers. We're on our journey back home to the sea. When we reach the sea, we then come back as rain, as clouds. And we keep repeating that cloud cycle, it never ends. It's eternal because water is one element that's indestructible. It cannot be destroyed. It is a living spirit. It is our connection to the Creator, the Great Spirit. Uh, and so we are part of the hydraulic cycle, unlike Western science that says we're separated. And Hopi say, no, we are a very important part of that cycle. We are told to put our hearts, our minds together. And then pray for rain. And our prayers will vibrate. And the cult people will hear it. And they'll come in gladness to bring water to our fields. So we do it through prayer. Uh, been doing this for thousands of years. We believe water reacts to our energy, to our emotions, to our prayers. You know, that's a fundamental Hopi belief. That Hopi is, that water is uh, sacred, it is spiritual, it is powerful. 
Um, and we've been surviving like this as a civilization for a long, long time. There gotta be a paradigm shift based on what we learn from Dr. Imoto and other scientists that are now exploring this whole mystery of water, you know. So I think uh, I'm hopeful. I'm one of those people that said, I think there's hope because we have this abilities, this power gifted to us by the Creator and, and we need to use that, but use it in a right way, see, in a right way to sustain life, to bring harmony back to earth, to bring holiness back to earth, which is, I believe, the mission of mankind, you know, but we're not using, using it that way. We're letting science and technology take control of our lives. We worship technology and science. The Creator is, we don't need the Creator anymore or the Spirit anymore, you know, and that to me is where our society is, is still heading and if we don't do something about it uh, together as one race, we've got to bring our hearts and minds together and our intent of, of um, sending out our energies. You know, uh, the intent would be to bring harmony, love back to earth. That should be the intent. <laughs>